So welcome to another interesting session of the Sustainable Fashion Workshop. We have with us Nila Madha Panda, who's a film producer and director. He has directed over 70 films and documentaries based mostly on social issues such as climate change, child labor, education, water issues, sanitation, and many, many other development issues in India. Most of his films draw inspiration from his own life and having won several awards, including the global recognition from Khan as well as Oscars with the movie, I Am Kalam. He's also a Padma Shri awardee, one of the fourth highest accolades given to civilians in India for their contributions in art, education, industry, literature, science, sports, medicine, social service, and public affairs. Thank you so much for joining us. It's truly an honor to have you be a part of this discussion. My pleasure. Good to be so, here. Thank you so much, Mr. Panda. So I have a question. Now, you've always been a visionary and in the forefront of bringing, light, bringing to light very, very important and pressing issues of the day. While most of us have just woken up to the crisis of climate change, you have been advocating this since 2000 and earlier. I would like to actually start off with your 2005 movie, Kon Kitna Pani Mein. It was directed by you, and it also spoke about two different castes that existed in India and the upper caste that faced a water shortage. It was a great movie. It touched upon a lot of issues. Um, also, the fact that calamities can make us realize that we are in this together. My question to you is that in 2005, when you had like, you know, Bollywood coming up with movies saying, uh, you know, like, uh, Bobby or Bunty and you know all the comedies but you decided to do something which was so groundbreaking and so different uh, and how did you convince people to actually work with you on issues like the social issues especially of this sort well in fact Kon uh, Kitne Pani may happen later but in 2005 is actually my turning point to see where the world is driving to you know mm. and of course it all began as i grew up in a humble village and in a perfect atmosphere so called perfect ecosystem okay mm. Mm. perfect ecology so it's like when you come from that background you'd realize it more what is happening to the air than anybody else of course you know you can't blame somebody growing up in a city because city gets into you so much that you don't realize how fast you grow you know okay hmm. but village makes you village gives you that sense of air sense of belongingness you know correct so thankfully i i i grew up in that generation who had witnessed growing up in a village and city so i can differentiate about the the so called environmental condition you know hmm. well in 2005 it was in fact a fellowship documentary i did which was um stunning you know when i saw in a newspaper there was a lone uh, hand pump standing inside the sea hmm and then I went to document that this is a film called Climate's First Orphan. Okay. So that was the inspiration and strength or the disturbing factor which happened in my mind and heart to bring stories later like Konkit Nepani Me. Okay. So when I went there, this is an area called it's 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 inside the National Sanctuary with Arkanika. There used to be seven villages. It, the area is called Sadhvaya, means literally seven brothers. So out of seven villages, so there was three and a half villages which were already inside the sea. Okay. And you can see remnants of the village, hand pump, somebody's pointing finger into the sea. You know, my school was there. You know, my house was there, which is damn scary. So every night you sleep there was, I had most sleepless night ever in my life was Sadhvaya. And since then, so just to bring the background of what we say, how fast it is happening, how you know dangerous it is to talk about environment is right here, okay? In 13 years, I'd been documenting that, 13 years, the hand pump we were drinking water, okay? That is now inside the sea, okay? 
so of course documentary you you can document you can do that but as as indian storyteller you would always say that bollywood is a great way you know film, you know fictional films are the great way to attract people you know more audience to tell the story then kon kitne pani mein happen so when people started talking that the next war will not be on on, on uh, gas or petroleum but water Mm-hmm. so i decided to have the story because we had witnessed many drought in our area you know in balangir kalahandi area so i thought what the why the drought happened and largely the droughts were been man made it's a very simple fact okay and so the world we have created is man made okay so you cannot blame nature because everything you have done here it's one generation it's us it's just last 5 6 decades who have used so much of energy from the planet that probably the whole history of mankind never had utilized that mm. so saying man made is a very common term you know we have done this so kon ko kitne pani mein happen is about how one village who are the the so called upper caste king family and then they abandon the 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 work of working class thrown them out and then in 5 years they realize the water which was coming with nature was giving they did not save it so they become totally drought green less barren world and there was no economy nothing running whereas the abandoned people who went to the down village okay they save the water become green and rich and it's the evident of the world what you see as nature is everything man made who saved water who saved utilized water they become rich so the power is really on how you save how you care nature so power is in you power is not about nature nature has given everything how you utilize you can become powerless or powerful so when we say that we have enough money technology everything no i it's, it's not that far it is how you care about the nature probably the guys who have i mean we talk about uh, say uh, bhutan look at how they are powerful i would consider the next part is about who is net zero who is producing less emitting less carbon dioxide you know carbon footprint so they are powerful i think this is a world where we are heading to i mean we don't have time you know it has you have to do in every bit so how you started saying that now even in fashion when you saying sustainable fashion so the word sustainability or the world word man made has to be taken very carefully and seriously then you can see your future probably you know humble future i would say it's not going to be easy for any of us that's true you've always been interested in doing uh, movies that have a message or have you also well, done I, like commercial no oh everything i have done i i felt that since i have a great medium okay Mm. it's a great medium people get attracted to all over the world they get attracted to it's the easiest medium to tell mm. uh, people convey people because cinema i mean there's nothing more exciting than cinema because it's i think it is the you know human civilizations most mass medium to change Absolutely. so i felt let me take the opportunity if i made a commercial film also entertaining film also i will give something back to the society so i utilize that very uh, cleverly mm, that's awesome but i also found it very interesting this is uh, something which i've been wanting to ask you also the fact that you've seen the power in children correct and the fact that children can make decisions happen and can also alter decision making when it even comes to parents you visualize this even before greta thunberg did her you know uh, school uh, uh, strike for climate so you've also had children work in your movies like halka so they were they played a very important role but what my question is 
do you think that in the future that we we all keep talking about having children be there in the forefront having uh, you know a place at the table what is that opinion according to you well i mean i mean in fact three films i did with children i'm kalam jalpari and halka and i say i would say that um, the greatest part of children is that innocence okay if you can touch upon and utilize that innocence because they don't come with any prejudice they don't come with any thoughts they are pretty much there with the existing structure of the world the society the family okay or friends and they understand where they are as adult it's just our responsibility is to give right approach right direction if you do that i always say that one generation probably what we have done they may not undo the situation but they can utilize the time and the world technology better to save our future so that's why i said you know the all the three films i made i utilize children's that basic innocence as the power of mankind perfect and that captured emotionally that changes the adults society everybody so all these three films has affected the adult population absolutely i couldn't uh, agree more with you it's definitely there is a lot of power when it comes to innocence and children and because you see it from different eyes that's for sure um i have i have a lot of questions but anyways so another thing is that you know i'm a fashion designer by profession and um, you're a filmmaker and right now you also have like netflix trying to sell a lot of uh, you know merchandise through movies but another movie that really there was a line from one of your movies god's own people that stuck with me was when there was this man who said who had a certain kind of fabric in his hand and he said this is the fabric that gave him the strength to move on the uh, move on on his journey for especially for the movie and uh in context of the film you also i would like to also speak about you have a lot of deities you know across the world where the garments are changed on regular and special occasions do you think movies and the fact that uh, you could actually influence people through it when we're talking about sustainability and fashion and also bringing into account the fact that we have religion which is involved what is what do you how do you think we could change the mindset of people because you have a lot of faith based organizations now coming into the realm of sustainability and they're saying that we need to start making a difference and giving back to the planet so how are you planning to bind this all together you've already done it but i would like to hear it move from you no i'm i'm very happy in a way because in a civil society in a community if you want to bring change faster if you want to bring change in a sustainable way you have to touch upon everything and religion of course religion temple church you know all this are the most influential factor in a society and i would still say so far we still haven't reached that level you know to to touch upon the issues of environment issues of the world we are facing today so like today what you doing is incredible when you said about that gamcha in god's own people they said this is power for me wearing a shirt wearing a kameez is not just wearing you know it it is a statement for anybody be the poor people or somebody buying or designer thing or anything you know when you bring change in this when i wear and say that oh hang on you know i am not wearing something which has even uh, emitted this much of poison to the planet so what are you doing today in terms of sustainable fashion or creating that kind of fabric okay it it makes a lot of sense when it starts with you eating your cloth your housing okay you know i remember 
when I went some three, four years back, one of these, I think Taj group or something, I went to the hotel and suddenly saw, so the, the plastic bottles are banned. So that small, small thing will start affecting, start, it's not about the change will happen there, but it is basically touching on your soul that we can bring change from this smaller thing. So in a society, of course, religious community, you know, religion and these institutions can play a major role to talk about it. It's not that you will change in a temple, okay, or you or you will change in a masjid, okay. But it is the sense what we bring because, like I said, cinema plays a major role, okay. So is fashion, so is writing, so is uh, theater, and why not? You know, when we pray God, you know. It's, it's about our life. It's about living being, you know. It's not about something about my achievement or what the world's economic condition. It's simple about the air I'm breathing, the water I'm drinking. Look at what's happening, you know. The shocking thing time and again, we see Uttarakhand uh, cloud burst. Time and again, there has been mm. flood. So there's so much of death. So at least we all can pray together and pray means do something together to save our people, the planet. Yeah. And I think the great thing is through your movies, like you said, cinema has such a huge outreach. People can definitely get influenced and, you know, try to do something in the right direction. That is for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I also kind of read somewhere that you started off uh, traveling a long distance when you got to school. So I wanted to ask you how much did that influence you in your movies? And also another thing is that that you uh, decided not to graduate, but take off, uh, take up filmmaking. Is that true? Uh, I mean, it's like many Indian growing up in village, you know, so I did my first five years schooling in, in my village school. Mm. Then two years, six and seven, to a school nearby, which is three to four kilometer. So that was, you know, a walking distance because the family could not afford a bicycle to make you go that far, you know. And then the high school happened to be eight, nine kilometers. So that's the journey you make in the morning. And especially, so that's how the monsoon has, has plays all, always plays a major role in my life, you know. That's the stories, you know, that's the world. Monsoon, plants, trees have been the joy, have been the witness, have been the friends to kill your pain. Those three years of life, you know, when you are in pain, there's somebody has to give you that support. And I grew up with that kind of a support, you know, and directly. So you keep watching the one tree, I remember the, the different form it gone into and three years how they grow mm. so they become characters in your life you know true that's true. so i think and i would say that i was that point of time it was probably pain but then i realized uh, in fact four years because they failed me the school failed me i i was not failed the school failed me in class eight you know <laughs> probably <laughs> never happened in my school i was such a bad student so they said stay back Sorry, I don't know if it was my connection or yours. I think it could be mine. Yeah. I think it's mine. Okay, I can hear you now. Sorry, I just, I lost you where you said that the school failed you. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the school was four years for me, not three years. So I, I did the class eight twice. Oh, okay. really? Okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, graduation. I, I was never been a good student, unfortunately. I don't know, I was bad at study. So today I realized, why I was so bad, I said, no, then I was mean to be something else. I mean, I would have been a farmer if not a filmmaker, okay? So I was ready to be a farmer. Like my family wanted me to be a farmer. And, uh, but it was typically a uh, Brahmin family pride. You can't be just to waste your life. I mean, how much ever they pushed me. So finally in, in graduation, I was failed in chemistry, okay? So I got a recorded marks of four and a half marks out of 75. So that's where my education started. 
<laughs> was that on purpose did you want to fail on purpose no i i definitely wanted to be graduate but uh, <laughs> and also of course i had the fear also if i become graduate then the family will say to do a job and i was little unusual all the time so i just wanted to get escape because of course escape in the sense the family what does a family want a humble family want in a village is you just become graduate take up a school teacher job or anything which will pay you 2000 3000 rupees get married so they happy with that and it's not that i was a rebellious child i was never been a rebellious child so far you know i was okay with family's concept i was okay understanding the family and eventually whatever i earned it went back to the family but i had much it's not dream i had much bigger thing to do not about career you know so when people ask me i was i was ambitious i was career oriented no i i was never not even today you know it's not that i want to make a film to make it hit or money or anything i do things i like to do i do things what i feel important to the world so my ways of seeing human is if you are born on this planet as a human you better be responsible and right. it's a responsible living you cannot be just you out Absolutely. of so many creatures if you are born as a human and if god has given you a interesting brain you got to do something use it <laughs> yeah yeah and it can't be just you so i find it difficult when of course i see you know say for instance when people say that can you do a commercial film why come on commercial film has also value they entertain you the way you need food cloth entertainment is also important so they are also doing social film so you yeah, can't absolutely. negate saying that oh madhav does social film so he is a good filmmaker and commercial film is not good then you mm. watch that right billions of people watch that i mean i myself i would say that my bollywood films are my my uh, what do you call mind food hmm true as the great brain food you know if somebody is entertaining you it's a great job it's a great social work absolutely so i've learned a few things from you one is take the risks second thing use your head do mm-hmm. something for for the greater good and just fail to succeed <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course you know it it keeps you that's what happens of, of course failure always gives you strength i always believe in that it's not that i choose to be failed nobody chooses to be failed that's true that's true and also the fact that you're a padmashri of body but you're still so humble it keeps you going i would like you to say a few words to the youth who will be actually watching this how do you keep your humility and at the same time do something which is so path breaking it has given you so much of fame but at the same time it keeps you going forward what is the you know how do you what can we tell the youth of today well i believe that like i said the biggest power in humanity is your innocence mm. okay and you can judge things you can do things in a much better way when because i feel when people say people are successful and you start looking at yourself as powerful you start looking that i can do these the, you know then you are overpowering your own thought so if you keep your soul and thought humble and grounded you probably always can judge and do things better very true okay then because if you are overpowering yourself it see nobody is bothered you know everybody is successful in their own way be it a mm-hmm. farmer engineer or filmmaker somebody wins oscar somebody wins, wins emmy or somebody is a minister you know there are much more you know you know in you know, universe there are much more bigger and powerful people than you always mm. so why to waste that energy by looking at far by don't look at that if you keep that innocence all these you know parameters of success or awards are just 
somebody appreciating you. That's about it. Absolutely. It doesn't make you big. I don't ever consider four hours make you big, but it is just empowers you. When somebody appreciates you, it just gives certain strength for you to do better work. Correct. But if you're grounded on that point of time, you will see yourself. Very nice. Very nice. It's something which I will also take away. Very <laughs> nice. Uh, we have spoken about climate action, your work with sustainability and a lot of other issues. What do you think? You, what is now? You, I consider you a visionary. I've always said that. So, what is it that? And you've already envisioned these things. Like I said, you know, way back, twenty-five years ago, thirty years ago. What is your vision? What do you think is going to be the next forefront for twenty fifty? Well, like I said about the human thought, it's basically you need to come back to nature. Mm. Okay, find every ways approach to be humble in front of the nature and start walking everything we do mm. in this planet. If you come back by 2050, probably we can have a sustainable living, happy living. So the time for us now, it's not about act. It's not about what action, what you're doing, but time is really, really change everything we do from your toilets, from bedroom to your walk, everything. Then only I can see your future of 2050, okay? Wow. So when I, I you know, I remember when uh, in, in 2005, I started talking about sea level rise, that look, there are three and a half villages has gone under the sea because of sea level rise. So in 2021, you know, even IPCC, even IPCC reports, that this many city will go under water by the end of the century. So it's not too far I talked and now we are talking, warning about the sea level rise. So it's high time. It's not about thinking awareness or anything. It's just everything you do, you have to start thinking. So you think if we collectively make these small changes, like you said, like, you know, conserving water, for example, when you're brushing your teeth or... Uh, not wasting food, you know, things like that. Collectively, then we can globally make a huge difference apart from also the companies trying to come in and make a difference from themselves. Well, more than company, global or anything, it's each of us. We have to mm. think our ways. Always, anything you do, think about the nature. You've got everything from that your food, your cloth, your air, everything you have got from nature. Don't forget. Find a way to respect. If you can't give back, even it's fine. You know, I'm not saying everybody to be an activist and work on that, but respect that. Don't tear up anymore. We have done enough. Very true. Work with nature, respect nature, and things will happen in a positive way. Yeah. You, you've been absolutely inspiring. Thank you so much for giving your time. We know you're very, very busy, but thank you so much for being a part of this. And I look forward to a lot more movies of yours that are going to be enlightening and bring all the issues to, to the for, for, forefront. Thank you so much, Mr. Panda. Absolutely. Lovely to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Nice chatting to you.